Okay, so here we have our gas cylinder. It's a dual action cylinder. This would be our clevis assembly here, so where the pin would go, uh, usually mounted to the piece of equipment. This would be the side that extends out to it. This is our glad head here, our gland assembly here. It's got um, a couple seals on the inside. You'll see that when we take that apart. These rods right here are tie rods. They just help in uh, keeping the tube assembly and the entire gas cylinder put together. Um, over here we have the butt end of it. This side also mounts to the equipment. These are our fill plugs here. I mean, these are already loosened up, but in here you're gonna be checking the little O-rings inside of them. I, I'll get the right. number off the box. The entire thing is the tube, and here's the piston rod. Inside the whole thing is the actual piston itself. We're gonna be checking the seals in that as well. Um, this is just kind of a get to know a piece of equipment that you're gonna be working with. This one's a Prince SAE 8410, capable of 2500 PSI. All right, so let's start taking things apart. It's our inspection process. Our gas cylinder on the vice right now, all I did was uh, loosened up a few of the bolts. I loosened up the bolt that's holding the clevis on. I loosened up the tie rods that are holding the gland uh, assembly all together. And we're just, I mean, we're just gonna start really just taking these few bolts off. This right here, I'm supposed to unscrew with it, but it's not unscrewing. You just have to hold that with like a pair of uh, uh, maybe a pipe wrench or something. Get that off in a second. See, we've got an O-ring right here. This is a seal that we would be checking if we had to uh, rebuild the cylinder. We'd just be going ahead, taking that apart completely. This is our uh, clevis gland, piston rod, piston itself. It's got a, a little uh, seal on it as well. Along with uh, this, little plastic, this little plastic in here. It's designed to keep this O-ring up in that trench inside the piston. So this is the lock nut that's holding our piston in place, right? Over here, we've got our cylinder, tube, whatever. And then this is our butt end of it. You can see uh, inside here where the, where the fluid travels through, goes in through this side, pushes it up, and then comes back out this way on this other side, okay? So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to try to take this, uh, take this clevis apart, take this gland off, and I've got here set up um, a little piece of, a uh, little piece of uh, steel L, and uh, I'm going to set this up in here in my vise, put a little bit of oil in there, and put the rod in here, and we're going to check, make sure it's not out of round or bent. Uh, we're also going to be taking some measurements inside our cylinder using our T-gauge, and we're gonna make sure that, um, that it's completely straight all the way through, also no bends in it, no bulges in the cylinder itself. Um, we're gonna be inspecting the uh, piston rod, to make sure that the chrome is still intact, no corrosion, uh, no bubbles in it, uh, no deep scratches or gouges in it from contaminants in the fluid. Uh, all right, well. Let me just start taking things apart. I'll get back to it. Okay, guys, so uh, we've removed the, the clevis head off of the piston rod end. And I mean, it's got threads on the inside, just like that. It, you literally just spin it off. All I did was take a, a pry bar through this and start spinning it. It came off pretty easily. Um, what we've got set up now is our uh, piston rod, along with the piston still on it. 
got a dial indicator set up over here and we're going to be checking to make sure that the rod isn't bent or out of round or if it's you know oblong or something like that uh, this should be perfectly symmetrical all the way through uh, and it should be completely perfectly straight from uh, from head to toe okay so if you want to come take a look at this uh, dial indicator over here now we don't have this uh, set to zero, but all we're doing is looking at the needle and seeing how many tick marks it moves around, okay? So I mean, this is uh, completely level in there, and we're just gonna kind of spin it around nice and slow. You're not supposed to have more than one thousandth of variance on it, okay? So it looks like it's pretty good right here as far as the round goes, okay? But we can see some, we can see some scarring in the rod itself. It looks like uh, somebody might have taken uh, some pliers to take to take either either ends off of it, and they uh, they tighten down around this uh, piston rod too too tight. Uh, if you're gonna have to go around it for whatever reason, if you've got to clamp onto this uh, piston rod, you might want to use a rag, put it on there first, and then use a nice good sturdy pipe wrench to hold it in place while you have to uh, take things off, and that'll help alleviate some of the scoring that you get off of there. Right, so we're just going to slide the piston rod a little bit further down and we're going to do the same thing, we're just going to spin it. And the, uh, the needle looks like it's just barely moving, less than a thousandth as well. Okay, and then what we're going to do is uh, to, get to, the, to get to the other side of this, we're just going to um, uh, pick up our dial indicator and we're going to slide it over, uh, over closer to this side so we can take our other two measurements. What you want to do is take four measurements all the way through okay so usually you take one on the outside one semi-center one right here and the other one closer to the end okay so again same thing I mean I know that the needles not set to zero but all we're doing is seeing how much the needle itself is gonna move on it okay all right so as you can see that's barely moving again which is a good good reading on it and we're just gonna go a little bit closer to the end uh, this is about where I'm limited at, but uh, as you can tell, it's it's not even moving right there. So our next uh, our next test that we're gonna do is we're just, all we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this piston out, and we're gonna see if, uh, if 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 it's got a bend in it. So if it's bending up, or if it's bending down, or to the side or something, we'll be able to see that uh, with this dial indicator. Okay. So oh my bad, that was bad reading. All right, so you can see that it's got some pretty notable wonkiness to it. I'm actually gonna reset this up to make sure that this is reading properly and not just me uh, holding it a little bit messed up. Now look at that. It's got about a dip of like 6,000 in it. See, we go back over here. All right, so it seems to me like this rod it's got a slight bend in it. Aside from the scoring on here, look at this, this is some different scoring right here. It's almost look like gashes, you can actually scratch that. Uh, if, if you've got some light scratching on it, you could get away with using a little bit of uh, uh, emery cloth. It's almost like sandpaper, but it doesn't uh, scratch up the metal. It just gets all the stuff off of there. Uh, you can use emery cloth to get a lot of these scratches out of it, but uh, that's beyond repair. You would have to hone that down just to get, uh, to get rid of that. Okay, so that kind of concludes our measurements using uh, the dial indicator and the piston rod. Our next uh, measurement that we're gonna be taking is gonna be using uh, the T gauges and we're gonna be checking on the, uh, the tube, okay? So let's actually just get this, this is one. That's the one, yeah, that's the one. Okay, so our T gauges, they're just kind of built on a couple little springs inside and then when you uh, find the measurement that is that you want to measure you actually tighten down on this and that holds them in place okay so you, first off you have to find one that'll fit that's a little bit bigger than than what you're trying to measure so you know that it fits in there okay and once you once you just fit it in there just tighten this end up and then we would actually take our our, our micrometer and uh, and measure this distance and now the same thing just like with the uh, with the piston itself 
Uh, we're going to be taking four measurements, okay? So we're going to take a measurement right here, measurement right in here, a third one, and a fourth one. And that's going to make sure that, uh, that our cylinder is completely round um, and, you know, still a perfect circle. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take our measurements. I'm going to write them down, and uh, we're going to get back to it after that. Okay, so here I'm taking my fourth measurement. Uh, I've already measured one, two, and three, okay? And we've got our, uh, our caliper here. We're using this as our measurement, okay? through and put that back in there. This one looks like it's measuring at and this looks even worse off man. This cylinder is definitely out of commission. This measured one point nine eight nine. Okay, so as you can tell from here, from our four measurements, uh, I started with one, two, three, and four on my measurements. So it's, it started off at 1.995, uh, and then it got a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and then back down in size. So that tells me that this, uh, this gas cylinder was most likely overloaded and almost slightly swole the barrel some. Uh, probably blew out a couple of the seals, because I was looking at... Uh, at this uh, this glad head over here, this gland assembly, and you can see in here that the seal, this seal right here, is completely blown out, and the little uh, the little white seal down in there also has been completely blown out. So I'm guessing that this was just kind of overloaded, um, and it blew that cylinder out a little bit. It would also uh, tell us why this is slightly, it's got a slight bend in it. And the slide bend is on the side uh, where you know where you would thread the the, the clevis assembly on. I'm sorry, clevis assembly. So I mean, we're doing a little bit of investigation on it. This is just a trainer. All we're doing is kind of taking measurements and going through the motions. Uh, but you know, we can obviously detect what happened uh, to our assembly here. So now that we've taken our measurements on our our piston rod and our cylinder, our next thing is going to be our visual inspection of. The seals, I already showed you the, the gland assembly. It's kind of blown out there. Um, this is the butt end of it, right? It's got the two, uh, two little breather valves on there. Uh, this O-ring in here still looks pretty healthy. Um, this almost looks like it's got a nick out of it right here. A little piece uh, where that, where that O-ring is not supposed to go at. Okay, and then the uh, the clevis assembly. We're gonna check the threads in here, make sure they're not scored up, marred up. Uh, make sure there was nobody cross-threading this piece on there. Okay, and then on the uh, this other assembly, we've already checked out those seals there. This O-ring here still seems pretty pliable, still workable. Um, I mean, obviously we're not gonna be reusing this. Uh, we're using this cylinder because of its discrepancies, um, but if this was just a routine take apart inspect it, then it would be, it'd be, all, all, most of those seals are looking pretty good. This, uh, this O-ring on here, you know, like I said, these, uh, these plastics are supposed to be holding that O-ring down in place, it's supposed to be wiping the oil away uh, as it's coming back down, so, you know, nothing's in that cylinder when you, uh, when you're actuating it. Um, this is a this is a dual acting cylinder, right? So as the fluid uh, gets in pumped in from one side, you know it'll extend it, get pumped it in, or you know evacuate on the other side, uh, so you can have the back and forth movement on it. Uh, this has been our teardown of a gas cylinder. All we're going to be doing now is reversing the process, and we're going to start putting our things back together. Uh, and when we're going to be putting our stuff back together. It's very important for you to be building from the bottom up, just like the way that, uh, the same way that we had everything set up uh, to, to, to take it apart, that's the same way that we're going to be setting things up to put it back together. Alright, so I'm gonna 
cut to this and I'll show you guys when that when it's all put on. Okay, so uh, I just put those gloves back in. Um, I've already tightened everything down, back down the spec the way that it should be. Uh, it's assembled all back together the way that it should be. See, you got a little bit of springiness. So that's because I got these plugs back in it. There's no, uh, there's no fluid in the cylinder, so um, we're pretty much wrapped up. All we're doing is going through the procedure, uh, measuring our, our piston rod, making sure it wasn't out of round or bent. Uh, we saw in this video that it was bent and that it's got scoring, marking on it. It's a little bit beat up. Again, this is just a trainer though. Uh, we saw that there was a little bit of, um, very slight, but there is some swollenness to this uh, tube. And that something went on in the cylinder that uh, didn't need to be going on. Um, for today's video, really all, the only thing we needed was a flare nut wrench, uh, a ratchet in the socket, and a caliper. The main things, oh, and the T gauges, of course, and our dial indicator. Um, just a few measurement tools, not really hard to come by, not really hard to use, and crucial if you want your gas cylinders to be operating properly and holding that pressure like they say they're holding. Uh, this was said it's holding 2,500 pressures. I'm guessing it overloaded, uh, but that's what you get, you know, when you got a job to do and you just got a certain piece of equipment. Um, that completes today's videos. This was Hydraulic Cylinders.